Oh, greetings, fellow humans. Uh, bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech, and I uh, apparently have my hands full. Today I have a little interesting little project I'm going to do. I'm hoping that it will turn out well. Let's see if I can take from what I've learned to provide a guide uh, for reaching the sound profile that one might be looking for. Now, over the last couple of years, um, I've obviously participated in a lot of discussions and a lot of people now come to me for help, especially when they're like seeking a particular sound profile. Now, there's a lot of different ways to describe sound profiles and I will agree that some of them can be considered, you know, very arbitrary or, you know, based on perspective. But I think that the three most common sound profiles that people ask for are thocky, silent, and clacky. So today I have three of these. This is the CIY Gas 67. This is the wired version. Um, it's a kit that has been out now for a little over a year. Um, it's a great kit. It does come as a kit. I mean, these are the boxes, and they do come completely taken apart. So, And they come with screw and stabilizers, which is good, as well as a daughter board. But since they already come disassembled, or unassembled, I should say, it's going to make it a little bit easier to go ahead and do the mods as we go. One of the failures of this keyboard, don't get me wrong, this is a great keyboard. It would be nearly perfect if it had open source QMK or VIA. But <clears throat> because it is a screwed keyboard, um, which is good. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like plastic uh, clip ones, but after too many times, the clips can break. But I think they have a lot more resilience as plastic screw holes. These metal screws go into plastic school, screw holes and one wrong angle, one wrong turn or just using a few times uh, could completely strip out the hole. Yeah, so today we have a white, a black, and a purple CIY Gas 67. Again, they are un unassembled and I'm going to, I don't know which color I'm going to do what, but I guess we'll figure it out as I start going along. So I'm basically just going to be applying some common modifications uh, that many of you might know. Uh, some I may do on ones and not others. I'm going to be leaving some with the original uh, parts that they came with. Some I'll be removing, some I'll be adding to or replacing. But for the most part, I'm going to stick with materials that most of us will most likely have. Uh, like painter's tape for the top S mod, uh, plumber's tape if you like to do the plumber's mod or whatever you use if you would like prefer the holy mod, um, and PE foam and some different filler materials. But I think that if you've been doing this for any amount of time, I think you'll have most if not all of these materials on hand. Um, and then also when it comes to the switches, I haven't, I haven't decided anything. I'm gonna kind of figure it out as I go along. I have a couple of ideas of what switches I'm gonna use for what, but hopefully we'll get to a point where I can deliver and turn this keyboard. Cause I mean, stock this keyboard isn't often. I mean, it's, it kind of lies somewhere. And this is stock, it's completely stock. All I've done is um, the plumber's mod to the stabilizers on this, but and these are Akko starfish that are in here. So it's not awful. This is just the normal sound that it has. It's not, it's kind of somewhere between thocky and clacky, but not really either. And that's kind of where, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, it, I don't think it sounds bad. I just think it lacks a little bit of definition to, you know, be sure or where it stands with its sound profile. So um, I will be keeping this one here that's stock so that we can do a comparison and we can say, all right, compared to the stock one does it sound thocky compared to the stock one does it sound clacking silent so on so <clears throat> hopefully this will be a fun experience for everyone watching i know it'll be a fun experience for me so let's go ahead and get started and break these 
keyboards out. I'm probably just going to go ahead and do the things that I have to do for all of them first. Start out with the stabilizers. Uh, and I may just, just to, well, I'll test to see the stabilizer wires, but I may just get away with looming them for right now, though they are screw and stabilizers. And it's usually better to do, um, you know, to get them prepared. But from what I recall, these did come pretty good. But we'll just have to see. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, to start, I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of show what is inside of the kit in case uh, you guys haven't had one of your own yet. All right, so the kit, the first thing you're greeted with are the screw and stabilizers. And um, these are actually decent. Now, as long as these wires are uh, balanced, I think I'll go ahead and stick with them. We see the coiled cable. Um, it's funny because when they first listed this, they said that they were only going to include these with like the first hundred of each color, but every single one that I've gotten from them has a matching uh, cable. In the case, we have the feet as well as the rubber parts of the feet. I mean, it really is a kit. You have to assemble this. And we have a Ziploc bag that has the screws. It also has the pad for below, below the uh, PCB. Um, mounted stabilizers and then we have our gaskets because we do have to install the gaskets we have a instruction manual on how to build it and we have a user manual on all of the controls then we have the case which as you can see does come together but not assembled as it's not screwed in let's go ahead and take it apart you can see that we have a PC plate nice and flexible this is where the uh, gaskets get stuck to and we have a nice uh, quite thick uh, silicone rubber and plate PCB uh, dampen, dampener and then we have a IPX sheet that goes over the um, over the PCB like I said, some of these things we will be using, some of them we won't. Now you can see the daughter board is actually already installed. And there's our JST connector to get to the PCB. A good thing to do is make sure that you don't see any issues with solder or any hot swap sockets that might be lifted off or any SMD component that might be lifted off for that matter. All right, so the PCB is looking good. Oh. I'm going to go ahead and put it back in its anti-static bag. A CIY switch puller, as well as a um, star screwdriver. A, a, T, a T6, T6 screwdriver. Now, I do remember the first time I got, um, I received this. I was like, what is this? I have no clue. But what this is is once assembled this goes in like this so that it provides um, dampening under the the uh, space bar I think I'm gonna make the black one the clacky one hence let me go ahead and Place the IPXC with some PE. All right, we've got these on here, and they're well situated. I would be doing a Tempest tape mod, but because I want some of the mid and lows, or mid and highs to come through, I'm only going to do one layer.
All right, I think it's safe to say that we got a clacky build here. So just to recall, we did uh, one layer of zip and fit, and we actually cut it out here in the middle since there, it was a little bit tight. Um, we did one layer of uh, tape, and we did the, the PE foam mod. So this is how we took a Gas 67 to clacky. Now, for the next build, how about we do a silent one? Right, just for a quick comparison. This is stock, including this. Oh, these are die sub. Those are double shot. These are die sub. And we've got um, the Aqua Starfish. Kind of muted lock. So I think we've um, we've reached clackiness with this one. All right. So for the silent build, we're going to go ahead and pick out the uh, purple one. All right, so for the silent one, we've also done the tape mod, and we've left the IPXC foam in place. Let's go ahead and I can put this down. All right, and let's load up the plate with gaskets. For silent switches, I've always been a fan of Gazoo's Boba Pinks. Um, now granted, these, these are the first silent switches I tried. But other silent switches, they just feel too, too much like I'm squishing a bug. And this feels nice, normal. It doesn't like squish. It just bounces back up. And there's no sound. So... That's what I'm going to do for these. I'm going to be doing an extra measurement to make sure that they're as silent as can be. But I think that you really can't go wrong. The other silent switches I've tested, I just, I personally don't like. And I feel that the little bit more that you might pay for these, although, I mean, I've seen some of those, I think Duroc shrimps go for like $1.20 a, a, a switch. That's insane. Uh, these go for between 60 and 65 cents. These were uh, sent to me courtesy of pulling keys. So um, I'm thankful for them to, to let me use these, though I have plenty of batches in um, boards that I've built for friends and family. So let's go ahead and load up these gazoo boba, boba gum. Yeah, I was going to use these, but they're a little too thick. I don't think they're going to work all the way over here. They might not even work at the time. But I do have these, and I think these will work. These are cork tiles. So, uh, So the tape is basically just to make sure that the dampening down at the bottom stays good. Uh, basically, this is the reason I'm doing this is to uh, prevent as much sound from escaping, both low and high. All right, so I am going to be using O-rings because I, I think that adds an extra level of silence. But I did want to give a an example. If for some reason you can't get a hold of silence, um, there are two things you can do. If you have some cheap blue 
switches. You can make jailhouse blues out of them, and I'll, I'll put a link down to my video of how to make jailhouse blues. But if you don't have silent switches and you want to quiet a board, um, find a linear that you have that doesn't that isn't long stem. So basically, it's one of those that even if you press all the way, it barely makes a sound. It barely taps. This one is a the NK milkshakes. Uh, if you take one of these, let's go ahead and stick it on the board, and then oh yeah, I'm a keycap set. I think I'm gonna go with is uh, this Keep Monkey Timeless Violet, uh, which is a lovely set. It's a PBT die sub and uh, ch cherry profile. If you want, if you don't have a silent switch and you want some silence, now you can try with one. But if your keycap allows, I would put two, one right after the other of the O-rings. And these O-rings, they can be bought, just search on whatever store you go to, uh, keycap O-ring. And you should find these. They should be fairly cheap. Um, no more than 2 or $3 for a bag of 150 200 So, notice we do still have a bit of a sound. Oh, we're not screwed in yet. And this is uh, a boba with just one O-ring. And this is the boba by itself. O-ring. With a normal, so you're still going to have basically that that tap on the up stroke when the when the switch comes back up, the inside of the rails is tapping on the sides of the top housing, so that's where you get that. So. This is a, a cheap and easy way if you want to get silent without silent switches. Um, it's, like I said, it's going to give you... It, you are going to have a little bit more of that squish because it's got two O-rings on there. Um, but, since we're going for silent, silent, I'm going to be putting one O-ring on these keycaps. Because as you see, <clears throat> here we have the one O-ring. Here we have no O-ring, just the bobo gum. O-ring. Boba. Boba. See, it's slightly louder. So I think the O-ring just adds, you know, just one more level. And, I mean, we're going for silent, so you might as well pull out all the, all the tricks. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. Like I said, this is a... Um, Timeless Violet from Keep Monkey. We'll go ahead and close it up. All right, so let's check it in progress. We've got the stock CIY Gas 67. We've got the Poppy or Clacky Gas 67. And now we've got the silent. So next up, we're going to do the Thaki model. So let's go ahead and put these away. Don't worry, though, we'll be sound test of each of these at the end of the video.
So we did it. Four builds, well actually three, because I had already done the uh, stock one, this one. So with the silent one, we went with the bobas. Um, I went with dense material and cork, uh, cork tiles down at the bottom. I used the IPXC uh, foam, uh, and I also did the Tempest tape to uh, capture, you know, as a low-pass filter. And I think it came out pretty good. I like it. I think it looks nice as well. Clacky or poppy? I, I think we hit the mark. I, I, I've always enjoyed the Aqua White, even though it's lighter than my usual fare. Um, and I do make some mistakes, but when it's um, lubricated, it does. It just has a fun noise. Um, the keycap set I just got in, and I was like. I'm going to go ahead and use it. Obviously, the legends tie into the black, but uh, I probably could have been a little bit more fanciful or creative with this one. But I believe, again, that this one came out pretty good. And for Thaki, or what I'd like to call crunchy, um, I think it came out pretty good. Obviously, not super creative, but I wanted to get the tall SA caps. SA or even OEM. The taller key caps are usually always going to help. Uh, to amplify the sound and give you a bit of a deeper tone. So, and I think we did that here. Obviously, the U4Ts um, have something to do with that, I believe. I believe. So I will be doing a uh, video for each one of these, uh, just giving a little bit more detail. I mean, I know I, I just cut through all of the um, the work that I did and just kind of just gave you snips. So I will do one individually. And if you guys have any specific questions, um, as to anything about the, the builds of the keyboards, or, you know, if you think that, you know, my clacky isn't clacky or my thocky isn't thocky, let me know. Honestly, in my opinion, I've got to say, I mean, for the price of these boards, uh, what they're asking for, if you're willing to put in a little bit of work, you're going to get, I mean, except for the QMK Via and not having uh, the metal studs, you're going to get almost a version of the, uh, KBD 67 Lite. Yes, it's not the same. Yes, but you're gonna get, you, if you put your, your time and effort into it, you're gonna get a keyboard that rivals or is, I mean, about as good software not included and in, obviously not the metal studs, but um, it's basically a pared down KBD 67 in a lot of respects. Obviously, it does have this weird blocker, but I mean, they just don't have a, a switch blocker here, but the material, uh, the looks of the case, although the lines obviously on the KBD are a little bit different um, than they are on the uh, Gas 67. I, I like the lines on the Gas 67, it's a little retro to me. They're chunky, so it gives me that retro vibe. So I'm going to leave you guys with the sa sound test of all the keyboards. Um, I think that I did a pretty good job at reaching what I was aiming for. Um, the sound profiles but if you guys don't think so let me know I'd love to hear your feedback and your thoughts hopefully you guys enjoy the sound test coming up like I said I'll do individual I'll split it up and give more detail as to what I did on all of them but if you guys got any questions I, I tried to cover as much as I could please put them down in the comments below until the next transmission keep calm and keyboard on